Hey guys, Jack here with more of the Rostcon's Rumble expansion for Hearthstone. I'm going to be playing an Aggro Warrior today by uh, Board Control, actually. So the reason this deck interested me was because um, yesterday when I was playing Tempo Warrior, right, uh, Tempo Dragon Warrior, I was thinking like, you know, are there enough strong tools that a more aggressive warrior can work? And Board Control actually made this list that um, it seemed to be very effective, actually. So I'm just curious to see and learn from this list um, if it's possible to integrate it into dragons or if it's just purely this package that makes it good. So, yeah, once again, this is from Board Control. Um, I'll link, leave links below. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to be trying out this deck. Um, and this looks reminiscent of the Rush Warrior from last expansion uh, with some new tech, such as the Soul Thraz. Um, so, yeah, let's see how this goes. Okay, let's see. So we probably want to keep Woodcutter's Axe, but in everything else, it looks like it wants to go right, because we want an Amani Berserker, Town Crier, or a Dozing Marksman. Cruel Taskmaster doesn't seem like the card we would want here. Okay. Looks like this guy might be a more aggressive deck as well. Alright, so we could coin out the Dozing Marksman, and the only ways we'd get stuff to proc it is if we drew an Inner Rage next turn, or a Cruel Taskmaster, so maybe Woodcutter's Axe would be better. Hmm. But we need to get a Death Rattle, we need to get a um, Rush Minion out before attacking it again. Uh, it doesn't seem like we can get one except for that was on turn 3, so I guess... Uh, Dozing Marksman doesn't still doesn't do much unless we get something out, but here, we'll tr we'll try out the Dozing Marksman, or... No, 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 we'll save coin. We can coin out Ornery Tortoise the next turn, so that might make sense. It looks like Adam's spectating me now. Yeah, I'm curious to see how good uh, Soul Thraz and um, the rest of this package is, because Dozing Marksman seemed like a worse um, Amani Berserker to me, but because it really relies on synergy for it to work, but uh, maybe it will work. <laughs> Please wait. I'll try my best. Alrighty. Okay. I think we'll do this this turn. And then next turn we'll go Town Crier into Woodcutter's Axe. And then try to give the buff to Militia Commander the turn after that. Um, I don't think he actually knows what he wants to do against our Dozing Marksman because it's inactive right now. Ooh, that's a bit yikes, but uh, it's not the worst thing. We do have a way to kill it because we can coin out the Militia Commander, so that's not the worst situation. Alternatively, we could have just went Woodcutter's Axe last turn to kill a Firefly, but uh, let's see what he does. Okay, so he's going to go purely for face. Never mind, we got rabid working, so we don't even have to find anything out. So he has a two mana spell now. That's probably the elemental one. So we're going to want to kill his firefly next turn, at least. At the minimum, we do have to kill the Firefly. Defend the gates. To me. I think the other play that turn could have been Woodcutter, Coin, Ornery Tortoise, but this way if we get two things out, we can Fungal Mancer. So that's the idea right now. Okay, let's see what he kills with this. We'll take first. He has more two mana spells now, but he has no way of activating them. Alright, there's Korkron. We're going to Town Cry first. Nice, we got the Rabid Worgen. Yeah. 
We can save Corcron for later. We can use this to get rid of his uh, card right there. And then next turn we can still Fungal Mancer the 0-4 and the 1-2 uh, the and make them stronger. He should have two mana spells though to be able to buff stuff. Uh, there's Thunderhead. He needs a like a lightning bolt or something to make use of it. Which that's probably it. Okay. damage in the upcoming turns. That's going to be a lot of damage. I think we need to kill um, the zero two because he probably has uh, damage spells in his hand. Um, he activated Rock Fighter, which means he probably drew a uh, a the um, five mana damage weapon or the five mana damage spell. Forgetting the name. Probably did. He had to have drawn the five mana one, right? Oh no, he didn't. Wow. Or the three mana one that does five. Okay, we're pretty lucky. We want to place this here because we want to buff Zilliax and uh, the other thing. Alright, if he can't remove Zilliax, then we're in a really good position with the Fungal Mancer and Zilliax, and we can start healing for a bunch. So we can hope. We can hope in this situation. So he should have a Firefly in hand, and what else? Oh nice, did we win? We still won, well played. That was pretty lucky of us, though, that he didn't get a, um, a burn spell. <laughs> Easy clap. Okay, but that was uh, into another matchup that was like sem somewhat aggressive, so I'm curious. I do want to see um, how this deck fares against the general field, because I don't think that... Um, 
I mean, I guess that guy might have either been running the aggro shaman or the uh, or the frog shaman, but um, I want to see how this deck does mostly against secret hunter and spell hunter, seeing as those are probably the two strong cards, and then some of the more controlish cards like the recruit hunter. It's hard. It's it's weird thinking of hunter. Uh, well, speak of the devil. Maybe I shouldn't have spoken too soon. Maybe I wanted a few wins first, but oh well, we'll see. Maybe I should not have spoken too soon. This is a good curve though. One, two, three. And if we draw a good um, rush card like the Raging Morgan. Oh yeah, that's not the Morgan, but still. Well, one, two, three curve. That's not awful. Alright, so we coined out a spell. Alright, let's see what it is. Alright, there's the Wandering Monster. So, the kind of scary thing is that if we play Ornery Tortoise, we are taking a lot of self damage this game. Um, which I would consider a bit worrying. Because uh, now we're at 21 health. <laughs> so, against Hunter, um, you know, that's a bit scary. Like a non control deck. Double tracking. Alright, that's very interesting. Uh, we might as well just develop more on the board and try to kill him as much as kill him as fast as possible. Although we've uh man, we've taken a lot of damage now. We've taken ten damage from our own cards, but we've developed a lot. He could honestly kill us if he gets some good cards, so maybe we made a bad play, but we'll see what happens. So if he doesn't get anything good, we should be able to kill him next turn, I think, because we have four, five, six, plus eight, plus three, even if he has a freezing trap. Okay, well that's gonna be explosive trap. Oh no, wow, Hunt, hounds, okay. That's interesting. That's also a bit annoying, but. Not the worst thing ever. Defend the gates. Let's see. I was thinking it would have to be explosive trap, so the fungal mancer would buff our thing to give it attack. Okay, cool. Oh, two wins so far, that's not bad. So this deck list is looking pretty spicy. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's not as hard face as Pirate Warrior used to be, and uh, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Pirate Warrior anyways, but um, it is nice to see that Warrior has an archetype that I think is faster. You know, uh, even though I'm a control warrior player, it is nice that like, I'm able to have something that can punish Hunter. You know, Hunter has always been such a long-standing thorn in Warrior's side for the last few expansions that uh, it is nice to have something that can deal with them. 
Okay, we have an inner rage this time, which might be good with dozing marksman. But I don't exactly want to keep it, but let's test this out. I don't love dozing marksman in this list. I actually think I'm, I might actually swap it for a Mani Berserker. It's just, I think the idea is that you have animated Berserker into Dozing Marksman, and that creates a 2-mana 4-3, whereas a Mani Berserker would create a 5-2, which is less good. But the fact that a Mani Berserker is always active, you know, is another plus side, I guess. So I'm assuming we want to go Orner uh, Dozing Marksman into Frothing Berserker Inner Rage. Well, this puts us in a weird situation now. We still want to play this, I think, because it's the best tempo play. Or do we just want to go Tortoise? Or we could just do this, actually. Ani Berserker, Frozen Rexman. Let's see how he responds. Lightning Bolt. Ooh, Glacial Shard. Okay. Um, wasting Glacial Shard on this is uh, important though. Hopefully not Taunt, not Taunt. Ah, nice, not Taunt. Okay, perfect. Before, I don't really want the Frothing Berserker to take... Conceding already? Jesus. Okay, wow. Um, I was gonna say, I was gonna play Frothing Berserker next, because I didn't want uh, Frothing to take... I didn't want Frothing to take one damage, but it gets at really high attack, so he has to use another spell to try to kill it. To be fair though, I think this deck is more Tempo Warrior than Aggro Warrior. An Aggro deck would be mostly consolidating in um, 1 mana, 2 mana cards, you know. A Tempo deck really consolidates with... Um, uh, I really want a 1 drop here instead of these two. This combo is good, but the other one's not. A uh, Tempo deck is more like... It has a more even curve where it's like, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, kind of like this, where it's like a few 1 drops, a few 2 drops, 3 drops. So I think the deck list, I'll put it as Tempo Warrior. Um, I have the name for it, but yeah. This is definitely a good list by board control, you know. Um, the other end, though, is that I'm unsure if this is because it's a good list, though, or if it's just because it's um, early in the metagame. Because whenever something's early on in a metagame, you know, you can think it's a good list, but it could just be because... Um, I'm going to attack because I want to give the um, bonus to the uh, worgen next turn. The uh, rabid worgen. Yep, that's why. Um, so how do we want to do this? We still have to use rabid worgen to attack into it, and that kind of wastes the damage. And then it's on one health. But priest doesn't have a good way of dealing one damage, so that's not a huge issue. Okay, that's fine. Then. While Priest doesn't have a great way to deal one damage, um, I'm still scared of this. And he could have the, f the four mana dragon, the um, the Duskbreaker, in which we'd have to use the Militia Commander to deal with. And then we're going to be falling behind pretty hard if that happens. Pain speak to me. There's Acolyte of Pain. We can Militia Commander it. Or we can Crowley it, actually. We can Coin Crowley. Uh, yeah, why not? On turn five, he... Hmm, he's going into his turn 5, which means he might have some really good cards, though. Uh, which is the Mass Hysteria. But I think Crowley, if he doesn't have it, we just almost end up winning the game. Because Crowley is now a 6-4, or 6-5. Which, you know, how is Priest really going to deal with? You tell me. And we have charge cards from hand, which is going to be very hard for him to deal with. The best scenario is if he Mass Hysterias, the 1-2 hits the 5-1. Um, the worst scenario is if uh, Crowley and uh, the Worgen kill each other. So we have to really pray that his Mass Hysteria is bad if he plays that. Wow, his best card Scalebane. Really unlucky for him, to be honest. Um, so we could Militia Commander, or we could go Fungal Mancer here. We have 6, 5, that's 12 damage. 12, 8. We have Lethal. No, we don't have coin. Well, this is... What now? 
This is plus 4. This is also plus 4. This is also plus 4. That's 12 plus 4, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we're barely missing lethal. I think we want to play the Fungal Mancer then. What does he play on turn 6? Are there any taunts in that deck? I don't think there are any taunts. What now? Yeah, at 6 mana, I don't think there's any taunts. I don't think Priest has a 6 mana taunt minion, probably. Um... Well, I won. Rip him. You have been. Yeah. Okay, we'll do like one or two more. This deck's going pretty quickly, so 